if I asked you what the color of water was, you'd probably say it's transparent. But what if I asked you about the ocean? Well, you'd probably say it's blue, but then that's because the sky is blue and, and the ocean reflects the sky. But what if I went deeper? I mean, literally deeper. If we go down past the surface of the ocean, miles and miles deep, we'd find that the ocean is very, very blue, and there's no sky to reflect at all. What's going on here? Well, the short answer is that water is actually just not transparent. And you might be wondering, well, how is that possible? And to really understand, we have to go to the drawing board and really dig down into the definition of what it means to be transparent. So let's take an example of a window, which we all know is transparent. Uh, what happens to windows? How do they interact with, with light? Well, let's say I were to look at uh, the view outside my uh, house. I would see pretty much everything perfectly clear, so clear that sometimes you might actually walk into your window. So what does that mean? That means that visible light comes into the window and all that visible light goes straight through. So that's what makes an object transparent. Uh, the fact that it does not interact with uh, or, or absorb any visible light, right? Maybe it absorbs other frequencies of light, so UV light or uh, uh, infrared light, but for your eyes, uh, you can't really see that because you only see visible light, hence the name visible. Uh, let's take a look at something that's not transparent. So maybe you have a uh, bottle of sake uh, and that tends to be green. So it's a green glass bottle. And this, I'm not the best artist here. Let me go ahead and make that again. So, yeah, so if we have this bottle of sake, and if you were to look through this bottle, you're going to notice that everything kind of appears green. And there's a reason for that. So, visible light again comes in from the sun or whatever. And leaving, you have mostly green light, and that's what hits your eye, right? So you're looking at a mostly green view of the world through the sake bottle. I don't know why you're looking at it, but let's say you are. Uh, the main reason for this would be that the sake bottle is actually absorbing other frequencies of light. So maybe it absorbs the blue, maybe it absorbs some violet, and it's kind of hitting a roadblock, and it's filtering those frequencies of light out. and Therefore, we would say that the sake bottle is translucent. Okay, so it seems that the main thing that makes something transparent is not absorbing visible light. So if an object absorbs visible light, it's likely not transparent, right? So that that is one of the no not absorbing visible light. That's one of the uh, factors for being transparent, right? So we make a bullet point there. Uh, but maybe you're thinking, well, what about uh, a mirror, right? A mirror uh, shouldn't be absorbing any visible light, right? It actually reflects all of that light. So you have yourself, if you look at yourself in the mirror, you can see yourself in the mirror. Uh, and we would say that the mirror is actually opaque. So no, you can't really see through a mirror. Uh, but it's not absorbing any. So what is it doing? It's actually reflecting uh, the light, and we call the measure of something's reflectivity, or the percentage of light it reflects, it's albedo. So it's got 100% albedo in theory. So the other factor for being transparent, so to speak, is is having having albedo, albedo less than 100%. Now in the case of water, uh, it does reflect light. Um, as we can see the horizon or the sunrise or something like that on the surface of the water in the ocean. But its albedo is about uh, six or six to 13% depending on your latitude. So that's not the real reason why water uh, is not transparent. The real reason comes down to, and we'll get into this, is the absorptivity. So let's take a look at water's absorption spectrum. Okay, so this is a complicated graph here, but 
I'm going to draw your attention right away to the visible frequency of light. So that's the rainbow region here. And you can see that the absorption coefficients on our left are pretty darn low in the visible region. So water is not really absorbing much visible light. It actually likes to absorb a lot more of the UV. So that's on the left side and a lot more of the infrared on your right side. But let's just take a pause and, and dial in on this visible uh, light region, this rainbow region here, we're going to notice that there is a slope here. Uh, and and the, the coefficients are very small, right? So less than uh, 0 0.01, but still ever so slightly, there is a difference between the uh, higher wavelength lights. So the reds and the oranges, right? They're a little bit higher absorption coefficient versus the lower wavelength lights, so your your blues and your violets, they have a little lower absorption coefficient, actually an order of mag several orders of magnitude different. So what that comes down to is water is going to let blue and violet essentially just pass through, right? It's just going to go through. Uh, meanwhile, it's going to serve as a somewhat of a filter for your red and your uh, yellow and orange. So that those light frequencies are somewhat going to get attenuated. And so that makes all the difference. Now when you look at this glass of water and it appears transparent, that's really just because the water is uh, still it is still filtering that red light out, but just at a very small degree to where you can't really perceive it. So here I'm going to do my best job to kind of illustrate that in action. So you got red light going in and you've got blue light going in, blue light goes out and your red light, it's also going out, but just actually, no, that's, that's blue. So <laughs> here, so it's, it's just a little bit attenuated. So you can see that this line on the, the right side, and you really can't see it, but I actually did reduce the thickness of that line. And so that that's really what's happening. So you're not seeing that. Uh, but if we were to stack uh, these glasses of water on top of each other, essentially stacking filters on top of each other into a column, well, that kind of sounds like the ocean. And this filtration would compound on itself, and you would get a really blue-looking uh, object or water. Right, so and that's that's really what happens with the ocean. So again, I'm going to do my best to illustrate this. You're going to get visible light hitting the surface of the ocean, and then you have uh, essentially these filters stacked on top of one another. So filter one, filter two, filter three, filter four, so on and so forth. And you start off with blue light. So the blue light comes in here, and your red light comes in also, right? Now, the blue light stays pretty much the same all the way through. Meanwhile, your red light is essentially decreasing in frequent uh, in, uh, strength, right? Because it's getting filtered out gradually, ever so gradually, until it is virtually imperceptible at the bottom of the ocean. And that is why the ocean appears so blue especially the deeper you go. Now, you might be wondering one other thing. So let's say we agree that the ocean is blue uh, because red light gets filtered out, especially as you go deeper. Why is the ocean or the Earth actually appear blue when you look at it from outer space, right? How is that blue light from the bottom of the ocean making its way to your eyes when you're an astronaut in space? Well, to think about that, let's think about what happens for that light to get back. So remember how I said water has an albedo of about 6 to 13 uh, percent, which is basically the amount of light that water reflects? Well, that really comes into play here. So at each layer that I've drawn here, a small fraction, 6 to 13 percent, of light gets reflected back out, right? So let's visualize that here for each of these layers. I'm gonna have a little bit of blue light coming out, and you can see this arrow's a slight bit skinnier than the incoming arrow. And that's my blue light. Uh, same thing happens to the red light, right? But 
it turns out to begin with, there's just less red light to reflect because it's being attenuated as I described earlier. So these arrows are really starting to get uh, pretty darn skinny here. So you'll notice that as we get to the bottom, there's hardly, hardly any red light to reflect or hardly any red light there, right? So it's basically invisible light right here. Uh, and so from outer space, what we're really seeing is a summation of all these reflections. So on the blue lights, you're just kind of adding all these uh, reflections here. And same thing with the red light. So when you're an astronaut outside in space, uh, you know, you're probably looking out here, really happy, you know, why not? You're in space. Maybe you're missing your spacesuit, but that's a different problem. Uh, so very small amount of red light is coming to your eye, but a huge, huge amount of blue light is making its way because of that kind of phenomenon that I explained. That's why the ocean appears blue, whether you're deep in the ocean or whether you're out uh, outside Earth. So hope you enjoyed that explanation and uh, be sure to subscribe for more great content and also any more questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks.